I'm Paris Bush. I am a content creator and kind of a all around internet personality, I guess, is what I strive to be. Um, I mainly work on OnlyFans, but I also do a lot of social media stuff as well. Have you always been a kind of a, I, I always have to put it this way. Have you always been a ham? Any of us who get in front of a camera, there's a, there's a certain yes. like ham energy there. <laughs> yes. I have very embarrassing. Well, they're not embarrassing to me now, but it's pretty funny. Um, tapes of me as a kid, I used to make my dad hold the video camera for me for hours. And I would just like do all of my Christina Aguilera dances in front of the camera and stuff. And like, yes, I've always liked performing. So it's not a surprise that I got into porn. <laughs> Plus my name is Paris. So, I mean, how can you not get into porn when your name is Paris? <laughs> what what was your favorite Aguilera song to dance to? I have to ask that one. Uh, definitely What a Girl Wants. Oh, that's have interesting. Very, have, I, have, I can still remember it in my head, the, the choreography. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, I <laughs> I used to, to break dance in a group when I was a kid. Oh, my gosh. My favorite one was, uh, was it just called Genie in a Bottle? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was. I think that was her first hit, maybe her second hit. Yeah. Okay. So, what a girl wants. That's a really good. That's a really good choice. Uh, yeah. Well, that's cool. So, did you have any uh, any plans to sort of extend that in other areas before you eventually join the adult industry later on, or? Yeah, what? I was a, actually a musician um, in my teen years. Uh, I started playing music when I was 14 and performing at like open mics and stuff. And then uh, when I was 16, I kind of got a little more popular and um, I lived in the Bay Area. So I was playing shows in like San Francisco and um, Berkeley, like all those places around there. and. Uh, I just started um, my MySpace page <laughs> to really date me. Um, I, I started a MySpace and uh, I started getting followers and stuff. And then I ended up planning like a whole tour with people um, across the country. And um, I ended up dropping out of high school to go on this tour because uh, it was like a once in a lifetime chance. And I just got my GED and I um, did this tour and I got to perform all over the country. It was really amazing, um, but it was also pretty wild because I was like 16 years old and I was I was way crazier back then than I am now, honestly. So, um, but yeah, I've always I've been performing my whole life, I guess. Is that music still accessible? I'm not sure if MySpace is even active anymore. <laughs> My MySpace is not there, I don't think, but I I hide my music very, it's stored far away on my dad's laptop somewhere. He He's the only one that has it now because um, I, I can't stand it, but I do make new music. It's just not like it used to be. I just kind of like play for fun now on the side and my OnlyFans subscribers actually get um, a little taste of it twice a month. I like send out little songs that I've been recording and stuff. So, yeah. Well, that's cool. So uh, now I'm I'm so just like <laughs> dialed into the music part now. I mean, what what genre? If it was maybe maybe it was a crossover, different genres, but what were you yeah. singing then as opposed to what you're kind of doing now or playing? Now? Um, it was, you know, I was a teenager, so it was very emotional singer songwriter type material, but um, it was also the early 2000s. So it was kind of like Coco Rosie, if you know who that is. Um, yeah. It was kind of Joanna Newsome-esque. Um, I would go to like the thrift store and buy a bunch of little like baby keyboards and then I would like hook them all up and like sample them and stuff. Um so it was a little out there, but kind of, you know, just like depressing songs about my teen, how hard it is being a teenager. <laughs> uh, you know what? I think a lot of us can relate to that because I never played a single <laughs> instrument and I can't sing. But man, was I into my chem so mm, yes. hard. Yes, uh, I was I was embarrassed to admit that when they were popular. But yeah, because yeah, it wasn't the cool thing. Yeah, I was I fought being emo for a long time, but I secretly wanted to be emo. I think I was <laughs> deep down. 
has that has that passed? Do you not have a, a single emo bone in your body or do you just hide it? I get emo. I get emo now. Um that's like anytime I start writing music again, you know, that something terrible has happened to me, you know, like that's just like what I do. I, I only write music when I'm like deeply sad about something. <laughs> it's, it's usually another person or relationship. So, um, yeah, I like to get a little emo. I like to put on the Elliot Smith CD in my car sometimes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> little uh, little portis head you know oh yes god that's not even that sad to me that's like sexy yeah that is that is like i'm sad but i'm gonna feel better in the next yeah. couple minutes <laughs> yes when i when i had a stripper pole in my house i would dance to to the dummy album all the time oh really that. highly recommend yeah <laughs> the stripper pole or the dancing to the album <laughs> Both. Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely both, but mainly the album. But if you, if you're a stripper, you should try it out. <laughs> not you, but yeah, not, not me. Yeah. I'm too, I'm too broad shouldered and top heavy for that. It's just, it's, it doesn't look good. Uh, yeah. It's very easy to injure yourself on it. That's what I've heard. It's frightening. <laughs> and it I have is. a catastrophic I fell, plan. So I was upside down and I fell like, um, like 12 inches or something on my head and it like barely hurt but I ended up uh like spraining my back and uh I had to quit after that because I it like wasn't healing right Holy so now I don't do that anymore too dangerous yep yep that's uh oh my god that's the worst thing I could imagine and that was only 12 inches I could you know if you're up I know it feet, was you know. yeah it was nothing I even like had a video of it because I was filming at the time and I I had took the video. I think I took the video to my chiropractor afterwards because I was like, "Look what happened to me." <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm all I'm all good now. Good, good. Well, I do want to see uh, where where things took you after you know the the music sort of subsided and you were. I would think you're kind of going into the the realm of you know 18 and over uh, and becoming an adult and kind of discovering yourself. So, what happened after you stopped? music what was your next sort of game plan yeah um well I've always had a thousand hobbies so I just like like anything creative um so one thing I always did um was like fashion design um and I would make clothes and I'm a pretty talented seamstress not to brag or anything but <laughs> I'm pretty good uh and I would go to the thrift store and buy like vintage stuff. This was like back in maybe 2012. Um, I started thrifting and, and selling vintage on Etsy and that took off and did really well actually. And so I, that became like my entire life for like eight years. I was, um, was just a Etsy seller, a vintage seller. And I had a few stores that sold my vintage clothes all over the country. And it was great. It was really fun. Um, and I designed clothes on the side. I still design clothes on the side. Just now it's more like funny, like merch stuff. And um, I would like to get a new merch line out within the next year for sure. But uh yeah, that's kind of where it took me. Um, I have always kind of like had an inappropriate style, I guess, and like sense of humor. So a lot of my designs are like kind of like, uh, what's the word? Um, I don't know. They're not for everybody. Like, you know, like I designed, this was when I first had kids, but like I designed like a nursing cover that had like boobs all over it, you know, like just like weird stuff, <laughs> like uh, things that pushed the boundaries. Um, and yeah, that's like been my life for so long. So it was so wild when it pivoted, you know, everyone's life changed so much when the pandemic happened. But um, yeah, I, I definitely want to continue designing. Um, but I just want it to be more adult focused I guess yeah you know what that is a that's a crazy stretch eight years of owning that business making your living off of that how long did it take for that to to launch I mean I know Etsy usually takes a little while to gain any sort of yeah offer. 
this was like the early days of Etsy getting popular. So I was there at the right time. Um, but it probably took a few years for me to like quit all of my other jobs and just have Etsy. Um, and yeah, it, it took a few years, but once it was like a full moving thing, it was pretty reliable. I just like lived at the thrift stores basically. And, um, uh, yeah, it, it became, harder when I had kids because I had like a baby and they he didn't want to go to the thrift store so like eventually (laughs) I had to switch things up but um I guess the pandemic happened at a a right the right time because um I'm a single mom so like my kids were like oh we're not gonna just sit here with you at the thrift store all day so um yeah everything kind of changed (laughs) to make adjustments yeah let's let's dive into when COVID hit and the lockdown announcement was called, what was going through your head? How did you, you know, happen upon creating an, you know, an OnlyFans account and kind of pivoting that way? What was that journey like for you? Um, Well, without getting too dark, I, uh, I was extremely poor once the pandemic happened because I had to close down my Etsy store Um, I couldn't work and I am a single mom. So I have two, I have two kids and it was really not good. I struggled a lot to, you know, provide, I guess, or to keep everyone afloat. And I was just chugging along, not doing so well and like making sure my kids were all right, but I was not good. And everyone on social media kind of saw me like suffering and I was in a bad spot. So my thought, one of my followers who I didn't know at the time, she's now my really good friend, but she DM'd me and was like, Hey, I just started an OnlyFans like a month ago and it's like doing so well. If you want me to help you start one, like I can get you set up and like, I think you can do it from home. So it'll be like really good for you. And I think it'll be, you know, lucrative. So I, I've never had a problem with sex work and I have like dabbled in it in the past. So I was just like, sure. Yeah, I'll, I will definitely do that. Um, So I got it set up and it was just kind of like an instant life change. I don't know. It, it went so well that I just, things just kind of like took off and they're, you know, still going, but if it wasn't for my friend or she's now my friend, but we became really good friends through the process. And if it wasn't for her, like telling me that and showing me the ropes, like I, don't know what I would be doing right now, but I'm really lucky that that she helped me set it up. That's wonderful, especially during that time. Cause and you you take a chance, you just you never know, right? So, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah. a lot of hard work. I kept my head down and I worked nonstop for a year straight of just like probably 60 hours a week. And it was from the minute I woke up to the minute I went to sleep, I worked nonstop on there. I like my, like my kids took a little bit of a back burner. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but like, (laughs) I was like, I'm getting us out of this hole. Like everyone is going to be fine. in like one year, I just need to like build this thing. And it worked because I worked really hard and I like, didn't let up at all. And then like, finally, after a year, I, I was in, um, you know, the top 1% or whatever. And, and I was kind of set up and I could kind of take a breath and, and get back to like centering myself and my family. And, um, so yeah, it's, it's taken a lot of hard work, but I'm in a better spot for it. So. In what is your day to day like with that? I've talked to a lot of content creators, especially those who have only fans. And it just seems like everyone's schedule is different. Everyone's approach is different. Uh, how do you just conquer a a week of work through owning a business like that? What is your day-to-day like? It's, I don't have the best attention span. So it's a lot of putting like one foot in front of the other. Um, but it's a lot of social media. You really have to promote yourself a lot. So 
uh, it's, you know, making TikToks, making Instagrams every day. It's a lot of administrative work of, you know, like the taxes and stuff are like a whole deal on its own, but uh, you've got to, you got all the upkeep. I got to make sure my nails are good. My hair's good. You know, like all of the little behind the thing, behind the scenes stuff. I got to make sure I'm getting new outfits, taking new photos, like always making new content. I try to schedule like a trip, a work trip once a month where I go out of town and, and work with other creators. Um, and so it's been a lot of like chaos and, I'm in a spot right now currently where I'm like really trying to get it really organized so that I can like start looking at like the long-term picture Um, because so much of the past three years has just been like, oh my God, this is like blowing up. Oh my God. Well, this is great. Oh my God. Like anal, like (laughs) whatever, like crazy (laughs) stuff. And I'm just like learning, learning, learning. And now I'm like, okay, it's time to like really map this out. So where do you see yourself? in let's say, let's say five years from now with the, at the rate you're going and how you're configuring everything what do you want your new schedule to to be like yeah um my uh my where do I see myself in five years I kind of would like to be an all-around kind of just like well-known internet personality as I say um not just for porn but like also for comedy, for like art, design, music, whatever. That's always been my thing is kind of like confusing people with all of my different avenues of, <laughs> of I don't know, myself. So yeah, I would just like to be more uh, prominent and have like a bigger following. And I want to do... Uh, a TV show. Maybe I want to get on some more podcasts. Um, I also write a lot, so I would like to write something or maybe start like producing my own content, like porn videos, like full on porn videos, not just like me, um, or scripted stuff. So it's a lot of different things, but I honestly am still figuring that out. That's probably the best answer too because you don't have just one thing that you know you just to focus you have all these different uh you know pots you have your your hands going into and I do want to touch on the the writing part of it you have how long you've been writing and do you you know write for fun here and there I, let's talk yeah about I I I do write for fun I used to write a lot um I used to write more seriously back in the day but I used to write music and then um I used to write, um, kind of like sexual health articles. You can find two of them on my, uh, link tree. I have, I have two articles in salty magazine on their online publication. And they're about, um, all kinds of silly sex ed stuff. Um, (laughs) but for now, yeah, I don't do a lot of like published writing anymore, but I am kind of cooking up something that's a secret. Um, and so I can't really talk about it yet, but when it's time to talk about it, I'll be very excited to promote it. Um, but yeah, I do hopefully see some kind of, uh, film in my future (laughs) (laughs) film TV show, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. What, uh, the TV show part sounds awesome. What, what, Okay. No no secrets to be, to to be (laughs) spilled on that, but are you thinking more of something to solely pitch to say like a streaming service? Are you looking for, you know, like more of an independent route? What do you, you don't have to give me any spoilers, but as far as openness of the projects, distribution and what you know, I don't want to say too much because I'm also like terrified that someone's going to steal my idea, but. Oh yeah. um, We don't need to hear the idea. (laughs) (laughs) It it, it could go either way. I'll just say that. Okay. Um, But yeah, it's set up to go either way right now, but we'll see what happens. That's so cool. I also completely, I feel like I'm doing myself, um, a disservice by completely forgetting about my uh, budding farm uh, that I have in my backyard um, because that's like a huge part of who I am. I don't know why I just blanked on that when you're asking me where I see myself. Um, 
so yeah, I am also trying to be a farm content creator because um, I live in the country. So I have uh, eight chickens and six turkeys right now. And I, I built them this giant coop and I make these like, I make a, a bunch of different kinds of TikToks, but I'm trying to grow my, my TikTok account so I can also be a safe for work creator as well. Um, so I make a lot of, of bird videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I can't believe you just, you, yeah, just went right past I don't that. Know we why. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I blanked on that. It's like, that's like all I do every day is, is hang out with my chickens. So, um, I'm trying to be like sexy, but also be like the sexy chicken owner lady. Um, there's not a lot of market for that. So I, I feel like it's an untapped market. I can't think of anything else in the zeitgeist that would fit that description. Yeah. So I think you're, you're filling a void there. Exactly. <laughs> the people need to need to see the sexy chicken owners. Well, I think maybe you, you moved past it or didn't even think about it because it is, maybe it's something that's just, just so you and personal to you. Uh, maybe something that allows you to, you know, find some solace within your, your crazy work week. And I do want to ask you, you know, what truly does allow you to relax when you can and not think about work? <clears throat> oh, man, <laughs> it's it's the most nerdy thing ever. Oh, I'm ready for this. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I've never officially publicly announced this. Uh, but no, my new hobby that I took up like two months ago is uh, arrowhead hunting. Have you ever heard of this? Is that where you're just you're going like you're hiking, but you're looking for old arrowheads? Yeah, yeah, like Native American artifacts and stuff. Um, <laughs> How do you even start? This? <laughs> I was on, I ended up in some weird corner of TikTok on my farm <laughs> account, which it's like a bunch of like super Southern people like hunting, like, uh, you know, like deep South kind of TikTok that I, I don't really subscribe to, but I was like, all right, who are these people? But they there's this like whole corner of TikTok for like people who are obsessed with hunting for arrowheads. And I'm a country girl. Like I don't, I don't hunt animals, but, uh, and I'm not like a Republican, but I, <laughs> I definitely <laughs> like love the outdoors and like my farm. Oh, there's my cat. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> this is Henry. A little guest uh, star. <laughs> yes he loves to be in videos should i move him is it okay that no no okay. everyone's gonna because he's okay. just yeah yeah he's waiting for he does this on my zoom therapy sessions too he just like comes and sits um but anyways awesome. the, i learned about it through the tiktokers and then i got really into it and just like fascinated with it and so I joined this like Facebook group for arrowhead hunting and I started learning all about it. And I've just been like obsessively looking for arrowheads, like, uh, for the last two months, just, we've been on like a zillion hikes. Um, and I finally found my first one like a week ago. So it was very exciting. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my really nerdy hobby that I do to unwind. That is one of the coolest <laughs> hobbies and yeah one of the nerdiest hobbies i could ever imagine it's I, so it's so nerdy um <laughs> i i like take i take a topographical map and then i have like google earth and then i like cross section like i'm like okay where's the high okay Henry. i'm like where's the high land where's the rivers and then i have to find like the public access points and then like you just go and dig it's like very fun <laughs> It's like a I can't think I'm like a psycho. They're like, oh, we're going arrowhead hunting again. Well, I mean, people go geocaching and urban geocaching. So it's it's no different. In fact, I, I think this is a hell of a lot cooler. Is that like rock hounding? That so I may be uh you know misspeaking about this, but I always thought it was, you know, you're looking for geodes uh, okay. or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. But yeah. someone else said, no, people will leave uh like new artifacts or you know prizes or just it's a really oh. weird thing and they'll huh. give you certain coordinates but oh, they might be jumbled funny. and yeah so i okay. i don't know i would prefer to go arrowhead hunting because that sounds <laughs> fantastic uh <laughs> and just a lot of fun so that i mean that sounds like a it's nerdy but that sounds like a blast to go do 
it's I'm really into like any kind of hunting. That's why I was so good at thrifting because I would just like have my mind set on what I needed at the thrift store. And then I would just like sort everything for like hours, you know, and like, like sorting millions of little rocks, you know, I'm just like, this is my, this is my comfort zone. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you're you're off your phone for most of that. And Mm -hmm. you're just you're embracing the outdoors, embracing nature. I think that's, that sounds like a lot of fun, honestly. Yeah. I'm a, I'm very big into nature. So I'm outside whenever possible. (laughs) That sounds amazing. Uh, I do want to see as we're, you know, getting closer to the end of the the episode here, I wanted to see if you have a party story that I had mentioned to you before we started recording, but something uh, usually with the show, they're either funny, (laughs) they could be scary they could be just something that is just, you know, it just stands out. But uh, an experience that you had in your life or your career that stands out so immensely, you would easily talk to, or talk to friends about it at a party. Oh, okay. That I kind see. of thing. <laughs> I love that Henry has just joined this pod. My cat he, is on this podcast. He's um, fucking adorable. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you're, you need your eyes down just a little bit. Um, so so something wild or, or embarrassing or scary that I would tell people at a party. Yes. Oh my God. I wish you'd like emailed this to me like yesterday or something. I know. I I know. I think about it. I try to, but sometimes it's fun to just say, cause usually the first story that comes to mind is the one you never thought you would say. That's, that's hilarious. Cause when people, I feel like most of the time when I get put on the spot, I just like black out. I'm just like, what? Um, <laughs> let me think. Okay. Um, dude, I'm really going to black out about this right now. Um, it could be, you know, an experience thrifting something crazy that happened there be, during your arrowhead hunting could be when you started your only fans Mine that I usually go to is the first time I heard somebody um, doing drugs at a rap party at Sundance. And I immediately knew like, oh, this is Hollywood. Okay. Oh, my God. Um, It's a longer story. But I mean, I usually think about stuff like that. Um, Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Okay. Off the top of my head. um, So you're going to have to edit this out. I'm like being so I'm like blacking out so bad. Um, Uh, you do edit this, right? I do. Yeah, I will. I'll, okay. I'll shorten it for you. I promise. Okay, cool. Um, dude, I honestly don't know. Um, you know, what's going to happen is like after the interview, I'm going to immediately remember like 10 stories, you know, that, that are like amazing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't really have I don't really have any that I can think of. What if we um, what if we narrow it down to cuz you said you were living a crazier life when you were performing music. Oh, okay. Okay. We can, yeah, we see can narrow porn, it down. I'm a really boring porn star, but like pre-porn star it was really crazy. Um <laughs> so yeah, I've got a funny story. Um so at the uh at the end of my crazy music career when I was 16 um I got like discovered on the street of New York I was I was like busking playing music on the street for money and I got like discovered by this man um who used to apparently manage run DMC and he tried to commission me and a friend to write a song for That's So Raven uh the Disney show (laughs) um the raven simone show on disney channel (laughs) it was so random what yes and (laughs) yes the the people at disney tried to commission me to write a song for that's a raven when i was 16 (laughs) and me yeah also it's really funny because i am pretty psychic and the show's about a psychic so i thought that was weird um but the funniest saddest part is that I was like such a punk when I was 16 
I was like, I literally was like, fuck you, no way. I was like, I'm not a sellout. I'm not going to work for Disney Channel. And then now I'm like, God, that would have been such a good story. Like, why did I not do that? I hate that. I did not do that. But you have you have that story. I have the story of turning it down. Yeah. (laughs) Because didn't Uh, she end up singing it herself? It's not the exact, it's not, not the, uh, actually, I don't know. I don't remember if it was supposed to be a theme song or what, but, um, okay. yeah, she does sing it herself, the main song. So they're always, that's like my biggest FOMO is like, why didn't I do that? <laughs> Cause it's, it's, you're, you're rebelling. <laughs> yeah. We're, that was we're, typical me. Yeah. We're very dumb at 16 and we don't mm-hmm. realize it until we hit our thirties. Oh, oh, yes. No. <laughs> yes. It, it was unfortunate, but I have very fond memories now of, of almost writing a song for Raven Simone. <laughs> I am so proud of you for having that story it, from going from, uh, yeah, I don't really have any, anything to that golden nugget. It's a random one. Awesome. <laughs> Deep. That was a dusty, dusty old one. Yeah. Um, well, it's immortalized here on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes now everyone's gonna yeah they're gonna like track the guy down the people the listeners they're gonna like find him um, is this true <laughs> yeah yeah can you confirm this yeah um but yeah sorry i blanked out so much and could not remember anything else no it's a hard thing we experience so much especially when you're a creative person that i feel like we just start filing filing things away and we kind of forget about it until we really just or put on the spot. Uh, yes. That actually goes really well into this next question, which is if you have any advice for somebody who is, let's say, especially nowadays, someone struggling and they're trying to find a way to make money or start a business creatively, do you have any advice mm-hmm. you want to pass along to them that maybe you've held on to in the last couple of years? Yeah, I think um, community is really important, especially in the sex work industry. I've found that the other women in this industry are very supportive and um, just like so helpful to each other. So I think also there's just so many free resources out there on like YouTube and TikTok, like learning how to grow your business or learning how to you know, whatever website you choose, or if you want to be an influencer or like whatever, there's so much free help out there, like on the internet, like tutorial wise and stuff. Um, So I think between that and um, having people that are willing to help you in the industry that you're in, like that will make you go so far. So um, I think those two things are very important. No, no, that's, that's, Awesome. I I love that. And I have noticed that after talking to so many, you know, members of the, you know, adult film industry, the sex working industry, how inclusive it is and how welcoming everybody is and how, you know, how everybody just wants to support each other. And it's been really nice to hear. Uh, I also want to see if there's anything I can give a shout out to or promote within the episode show notes as well. Anything you really care about, whether it's your business and organization you really care about, is there something that, that comes to mind? Sure. If uh, if anyone wants to subscribe to my OnlyFans, it's uh, OnlyFans.com slash Paris Bush, or you can just go to ParisBush.com. Um, you know, follow me on Twitter at It's Paris Bush, and you'll find all my links there. So I think that would be good if you can promote it, if you're allowed to. <laughs> I oh, know people, yeah. websites are so weird about promoting OnlyFans. You can't like type the word. Yeah, that is the the weird thing about distribution sites. And luckily, you have your own website either way. So it works out. Periscope.com. Yes. (laughs) Perfect, perfect. Things like that. (laughs) Well, uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking at the clock and 40 minutes just kind of flew by. Uh, Yeah, it did. (laughs) It may have gone really slow for you because, you know. No. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. It wasn't slow. This is my second Zoom call actually today. So, oh, okay. (laughs) I feel so special. (laughs) I'm going to go get coffee. And uh, first podcast today, though. So it's okay. You're the first and only podcast I had today. Victory. 
That's yeah. a victory lap. Well, I have uh, one last thing we have to do before I stop the recording here. Okay. Uh, and that is conduct what I like to call an awkward goodbye. So <laughs> it, I thought you were going to say a casting couch situation. You're oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's hey, I, a, okay. the first audition I ever had, I thought I was walking into that situation. <laughs> it was a, a little office right above a really decrepit pet store, a lizard oh, no. pet store with a glass door and a black curtain covering it. Oh, no. And, yeah. And it was from a Craigslist audition. Was Luckily, it like an acting audition? It was. Yeah. So oh, it ended up being legitimate. But walking up those steps and seeing it, no one else was there. Yes. Like, okay. Yeah. All right. That is very, uh, yeah. You're just like, whatever, <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> did you get little, the part? Uh, I did not. But I ended up working as their production assistant for two years. So oh, two really years. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no casting couch scenarios here. However, it yeah. will be incredibly awkward because I'll give you a three, two, one finger count. And when I point to you, just give us your best verbal and visual awkward goodbye. Oh my God. You really <laughs> are putting, you are putting me on the spot today. Yep. yep. It's happening. My, it's happening. Okay. My improv classes I didn't take. <laughs> um, okay. You ready here? Yeah. Wait. Right, wait, wait, wait. What? No, go ahead. Yeah. No? Huh? Huh? Okay. Here we go. In three, two. Um, how do I hang up this thing? Hold on. I have to go. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>